way to fight for the values of this city and this country. Are you proud to be a New Yorker? Are you proud to be an American? No one will take our American values away from us. Let's take a moment to thank Javier and all of the people, the organizations, who put together this extraordinary rally. Let's thank them all right now. Now, brothers and sisters, you have seen this over these last days. You saw it last weekend with the extraordinary protests here in New York City and around the country. You see it today. The people coming out as never before. But let's also take a moment to thank the people who protect us and work to make sure these rallies are peaceful for all, let us thank the officers of the NYPD. And what we have to remind President Trump, one thing, one example we have to remind him of is 900 New York City police officers who protect us all and are proud Muslim Americans. That is an example of the American dream in action, American values in action, but the President's executive order is fundamentally un-American. It's as simple as that. We've seen an order that makes no sense on its face, that is filled with contradictions that has caused confusion, but underneath all that, we see the beginning of the degradation of our civil liberties and our constitutional rights. We are not fooled, are we? We see clearly where this road leads and how dangerous it is. We can see the beginning of a Muslim ban clearly and that is not consistent with our constitutional values. We can see people treated differently because of who they are, because of God they worship in a nation that was founded, founded to respect all faiths and to harbor people who have been subjected to religious persecution and violence. It's the very origins of this country were to be something different in the world, something better in the world, and we will not let Donald Trump take that away from us. We have never seen such a brazen and open and immediate attempt by a president to undermine our Constitution. We have seen a president attempt to defy the judiciary. His name was Richard Nixon. Now, that didn't end well, did it, my friends? So, the notion that a federal judge in Brooklyn, and let me just say, I am proud to be a Brooklynite today. A federal judge in Brooklyn said, to borrow the reverse of President Obama's phrase, no, you can't. No, you can't. A federal judge said that. That is supposed to be sacrosanct. The notion that President Trump and his administration are openly defying our judiciary should send a chill up the spine of every American, regardless of party, regardless of ideology, because it breaks with a tradition of following the law and believing in equal treatment under the law. My friends, I guarantee you that Americans of all backgrounds, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, all the people who feel a libertarian view are going to look at this moment and you're going to find people who are aghast from every background, every ideology. Because by the way, people from all of those different backgrounds in common fear the degradation of our rights and liberties. We saw a coalition come together 
to address the excesses of the Patriot Act. We saw that in our own Congress, Democrats and Republicans alike who did not want to see the invasion of privacy. Well now, due process is under attack. Being held and detained without a charge, something fundamentally against our Constitution. We saw it with our own eyes yesterday. We need to build a broader coalition of conscience in this country to stop what's happening here. I want to give a special thanks to all the people who went out to the airport to protest. And I want to thank our Congress members, Nydia Velasquez and Jerry Nadler, who went there federal authority to seek fairness and due process. I want to thank my commissioner for immigrant affairs, Nisha Argawal, who helped the families of the detainees. And I've spoken to Nisha about what she experienced and she had never seen anything like it in her life as an advocate and lawyer. She had never seen people detained so brazenly without any due process, without any charge. And she told me that even as early as this afternoon, there were still 17 individuals being held without a charge at JFK. This, when you talk about vetting, vetting suggests that someone has done something wrong and we're looking into it. These 17 individuals are being held with no basis, with no facts, with no charge. That is not acceptable in the United States of America. At least, at least, is a lawful, permanent resident of the United States and a resident of New York City. A permanent, lawful resident, the last step before citizenship. And yet, in detention for no reason whatsoever. For New Yorkers, for New Yorkers, this hits a chord. There are 800,000 lawful, permanent residents in New York City. And we are not going to let them be treated like people who have done harm when they haven't done a single thing wrong. One of the people, listen to this, one who was just released, a 78-year-old man who suffers from lymphoma, a legal permanent resident. Another who was detained. Listen to this, a woman traveling to visit her daughter who's about to give birth. Or how about this, two family members detained who are members of the family of active duty U.S. military personnel. Someone said earlier today, there's not three branches of government, there's four, there's the executive, legislative, judiciary, and the people. And one of them is the most important of all, it is you, the people. You've come here, you've come here to this spot for a reason, because behind us is not only the Statue of Liberty, expressing our fundamental values of inclusion and respect for all humanity. But there's also Ellis Island. 12 million people went through Ellis Island and formed the nucleus of a growing nation. 12 million people. 40, 
Forty percent of all Americans today can trace their origins to those who went through Ellis Island. And I'll tell you one thing, I'll tell you one thing, those 12 million of our ancestors, including my two grandparents from southern Italy who came to this country, and we're so proud to be Americans. I'll tell you one thing they'd say to us. We're all human beings. We came to this country for freedom. We came to this country because it is a beacon. We will not let that beacon be put out by Donald Trump. We will fight, and my dear friends, we will uphold our Constitution, our laws, our values, and we will win. God bless you all.